a journey around the Mediterranean, with visits to Spain, France, Italy, Greece, Turkey, Israel, and Egypt. Dr. Sidney Soclough, 2020, Dr. Sidney at Earthlink.net. Narration by Dr. Sidney Soclough. Sally Phonemes. And Nathan Phonemes. This is a map of the Mediterranean region. These are some countries of interest to tourists in the Mediterranean region. These are places of interest to cruise ship passengers in the Mediterranean region. What's on your bucket list for a Mediterranean cruise? Where did the term bucket list originate? The Bucket List was a 2007 American comedy drama film directed by Rob Reiner and starring Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman. The main plot follows two terminally ill men, portrayed by Nicholson and Freeman, on their road trip with a wish list of things to do before they kick the bucket, from which the movie's title gets its name. If you were a tourist in ancient times, these seven wonders of the ancient world would be on your list. These are the seven wonders of the ancient world. This shows the location of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Of these seven wonders of the ancient world, which are the only ones to survive to this present day, of these seven wonders of the ancient world, which are the only ones to survive to this present day? The Great Pyramid of Giza is the only one surviving today. What's on your bucket list for a Mediterranean cruise? Here are some top picks for a Mediterranean cruise. This is Gibraltar. This is the Alhambra in Granada, Spain. This is the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, Spain. This is Caen in the French Riviera. This is the Monte Carlo Casino in Monaco. This is the Cathedral, or Duomo, in Florence, Italy. This is the Leaning Tower and Cathedral of Pisa, Italy. This is St. Peter's Square in the Vatican City. This is the Forum in Rome. This is the Grand Canal of Venice, Italy. This is St. Mark's Square in the Basilica in Venice. This is the walled city of Dubrovnik in Croatia. This is the Acropolis in Athens, Greece. This is the Blue Mosque in Istanbul, Turkey. These are the ruins of Ephesus in Turkey. This is Jerusalem in Israel. These are the pyramids of Giza, Egypt. The Mediterranean basin was the early source of Western civilization starting with the early development of agriculture in the Tigris and Euphrates river valleys of Mesopotamia and the Nile in Egypt. This shows Mesopotamia and the Fertile Crescent. This is the Fertile Crescent in the hydraulic civilizations, those based on irrigation in the Nile Valley of Egypt, and the Tigris and Euphrates river valleys in Mesopotamia. The surplus of food available meant that not everybody had to be engaged in food production and can do other things. The size of the group could increase drastically to the extent that first small settlements of hundreds, and then towns, 
and even cities of thousands of people could be established. The beginning of cities and the resulting larger scale communication and transfer of information between people mark the true beginning of what we call civilizations. Then there was philosophy, science, and culture of ancient Greece, followed by the vast Roman Empire with great advances in engineering, civil administration, and law. The ease of communications across the Mediterranean Sea made it the inland sea of early civilizations. The history of the Mediterranean region is important to understanding the origin and development of the Mesopotamian, Egyptian, Phoenician, Jewish, Greek, Latin, Arab, Persian, and Turkish cultures and hence is important to understanding the development of Western civilization as we understand it today. In the present day, tourism has become a major source of income for Mediterranean coastal states, where more than half of world income from tourism is generated annually. Tens of millions of people descend each summer to enjoy the Mediterranean's beaches and culture-rich shores. Where's the Mediterranean Sea? Here is the Mediterranean Sea. The Mediterranean Sea is a sea of the Atlantic Ocean, almost completely enclosed by land, on the north by Europe, on the south by Africa, and on the east by Asia. The Mediterranean Sea is an intercontinental sea that stretches from the Atlantic Ocean on the west to Asia on the east, and separates Europe from Africa. It was known to the Romans as Mare Nostrum, or our sea. The Mediterranean Sea is almost landlocked. The Mediterranean Sea covers an approximate area of 2.5 million square kilometers or 965,000 square miles, but its connection to the Atlantic by the Strait of Gibraltar is only 14 kilometers, or 9 miles wide. Gibraltar on the Mediterranean side of the Strait is a British overseas territory, located near the southernmost tip of the Iberian Peninsula. The territory shares a border with Spain to the north. Gibraltar has historically been an important base for the British Armed Forces and is the site of a Royal Navy base. Most of the rock supper area is covered by a nature reserve, which is home to around 250 Barbary macaques, commonly known as apes. They are the only wild monkeys found in Europe. These macaques as well as a labyrinthine network of tunnels attracts a large number of tourists per year. The west to east extent of the Mediterranean Sea, from the Strait of Gibraltar between Spain and Morocco to the shores of the Gulf of Iskenderun on the southwestern coast of Turkey, is approximately 2,400 miles or 4,000 kilometers. To get a better perspective on the extent of the Mediterranean Sea, we have an overlay of it with the U.S. We see that from west to east, the Mediterranean would extend almost from coast to coast in the U.S. The width of the Mediterranean varies considerably. From Athens in Greece to the coast of Libya in North Africa, the distance is only about 500 miles or 800 kilometers. Generally shallow, the Mediterranean Sea has an average depth of 1,500 meters or 4,900 feet. It reaches a maximum depth of 5,150 meters, or 16,896 feet, off the southern coast of Greece. The Mediterranean Sea is just slightly smaller than the Caribbean Sea. Although both can be considered to be part of the Atlantic Ocean, the Mediterranean is almost completely enclosed by land, on the north by Europe, on the south by Africa, and on the east by Asia.
In oceanography, it is sometimes called the African Mediterranean Sea or the European Mediterranean Sea. To distinguish it from Mediterranean seas or seas between lands elsewhere. The history of the Mediterranean is important in understanding the origin and development of Western civilization. The Mediterranean Sea has often been called the incubator or cradle of Western civilization. The Mediterranean Sea was a superhighway of transport in ancient times, allowing for trade and cultural exchange between peoples of the region, including the Mesopotamian, Egyptian, Semitic, Persian, Phoenician, Carthaginian, Greek, Roman, and Turkish cultures. The term Mediterranean derives from the Latin Mediterraneus, inland, medius, middle plus terra, land, earth, and in the Greek misogyus. The Mediterranean Sea has been known by a number of alternative names throughout human history. It was, for example, commonly called Mare Nostrum, in Latin, our sea, by the Romans. In the Old Testament, since it was on the west coast of the Holy Land, and therefore behind a person facing the east, it is called the Hinder Sea sometimes translated as Western Sea, and also the Sea of the Philistines, because that people occupied a large portion of its shores near the Israelites. Mostly, however, it was the Great Sea, or simply the Sea, in Hebrew. It is called Hayam Hatihon, the Middle Sea. The German equivalent is Middlemere in Turkish. It is Actinus, the White Sea. In Arabic, it is Albar al Abayanamitoasit, the Middle White Sea. The Mediterranean Sea is connected to the Atlantic Ocean by the Strait of Gibraltar on the west and to the Sea of Marmara and Black Sea, by the Dardanelles and the Bosphorus respectively, on the east. The Sea of Marmara is often considered a part of the Mediterranean Sea whereas the Black Sea is generally not. The Turkish city of Istanbul straddles two continents at the Bosphorus. Here is the Bosphorus and the two continents, Europe and Asia. The man-made Suez Canal opened in 1869 in the southeast and connects the Mediterranean Sea with the Red Sea. The western extremity of the Mediterranean connects with the Atlantic Ocean by the narrow and shallow channel of the Strait of Gibraltar, which is only nine miles wide at its narrowest point. Being nearly landlocked affects the Mediterranean Sea's properties. For instance, tides are very limited as a result of the narrow connection with the Atlantic Ocean. The Mediterranean is characterized and immediately recognized by its imposing deep blue color, especially around Greek islands. We will next have a short video clip of the Mediterranean Sea. Mediterranean means sea between lands, as its waters bathe the coast of Europe, Africa, and Asia. Cradle of cultures and civilizations throughout history, this sea is characterized by its warm waters of high salinity. The Mediterranean Sea has only one connection with the Atlantic Ocean, through the Strait of Gibraltar. It's a not very deep sea that is formed out of two sea basins, the Oriental and the Occidental one, that are connected through the Strait of Sicily. In its waters, we find 10% of the world's biodiversity. The biggest treasure of this sea are the Posidonia Meadows, which are the main source of oxygen in the Mediterranean. They form an important habitat for many species, and, since they slow down the waves, they prevent beach erosion. For researchers, the Mediterranean is a small-scale laboratory. Using data from satellites and observation systems like ICTS SOSIB, they are able to study important physical processes, like eddy formation, or the effects of climate change at a smaller scale than big oceans. 
This information helps us improve our knowledge on the oceans, to predict the impact of our activities, and design strategies to preserve one of the biggest and most fragile ecosystems in the planet. The depth of the sill or submarine ridge separating the Atlantic from the Mediterranean Sea is 1,050 feet or 320 meters. This sill restricts circulation through the narrow Strait of Gibraltar, thereby greatly reducing the tidal range of the sea and, coupled with high rates of evaporation, it makes the Mediterranean much saltier than the Atlantic Ocean. The Mediterranean Sea does have tides, but they are of a very low height, as you can see in the diagram, where the tides are just a few centimeters, whereas in the Atlantic Ocean, the tides measure up to 1.5 meters, or 5 feet. The Mediterranean Sea loses by evaporation twice the amount of water that it receives from all of the rivers that flow into it, and all of the rainfall. Indeed, Evaporation greatly exceeds the combined effects of both rainfall and river runoff in the Mediterranean, a fact that is central to the water circulation within the basin. If evaporation greatly exceeds rainfall and river runoff, why hasn't the sea dried up? The answer is the influx of water from the Atlantic Ocean. The sea is of higher salinity than the Atlantic. Evaporation is especially high in its eastern half, causing the water level to decrease and salinity to increase eastward. This pushes relatively cool, low salinity water coming in from the Atlantic across the sea and it warms, and becomes saltier as it travels east. It then sinks in the region of the Levant, and circulates westward to spill over the Strait of Gibraltar. Thus, seawater flows eastward in the Strait's surface waters, and westward below. The Mediterranean has been metaphorically described as breathing, inhaling surface water from the Atlantic, and exhaling deep water in a countercurrent below. There is a continuous inflow of surface water from the Atlantic Ocean. After passing through the Strait of Gibraltar, the main body of the incoming surface water flows eastward along the north coast of Africa. This current is the most constant component of the circulation of the Mediterranean. It is most powerful in summer, when evaporation in the Mediterranean is at a maximum. This inflow of Atlantic water loses its strength as it proceeds eastward but it is still recognizable as far as Sicily. What time is it in the Mediterranean region? We see that the Mediterranean Sea spans three time zones in the western end of Spain. It is GMT, or Greenwich Mean Time plus one. But across the Strait of Gibraltar, Morocco is on GMT. From Spain through France. Italy and the Balkans it is GMT plus 1. At the eastern end, Greece and Turkey are GMT plus 2. Large islands in the Mediterranean include The Balearic Islands which include Ibiza, Majorca, and Menorca in the western Mediterranean. And Sardinia, Corsica, Sicily and Malta in the central Mediterranean. Malta and Sicily have commanded shipping through the strategically located Strait of Sicily between Sicily and Tunisia, and the Strait of Messina. In the eastern Mediterranean are the islands of Cyprus and Crete. Important seaports in the region are Barcelona in Spain, Marseille in France, Genoa and Trieste in Italy, Haifa and Ashdod in Israel, and Piraeus in Greece. Barcelona Harbour is Spain's most important Mediterranean port. 
21 modern states have a coastline on the Mediterranean Sea. They are, in Europe, from west to east, Spain, France, Monaco, Italy, the island state of Malta, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, Montenegro, Albania, Greece, Turkey, and the island Republic of Cyprus. In Asia, from north to south, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon and Israel, and in Africa, from east to west, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. A shallow submarine ridge in the Strait of Sicily, with a sill depth of about 1,200 feet between the island of Sicily and the coast of Tunisia, divides the sea in two main parts or basins, the Western Mediterranean and the Eastern Mediterranean. This is a cross-sectional view of the Mediterranean Sea, and we see the division into two distinct basins, the Eastern and Western, separated by the Strait of Sicily. The Western Mediterranean covers an area of about 0.85 million square kilometers, and the Eastern Mediterranean about 1.65 million square kilometers. The Mediterranean Sea is subdivided into a number of smaller seas, each with their own designation. In the Western Mediterranean there is, from west to east, the Alboran Sea, between Spain and Morocco, the Balearic Sea, between mainland Spain and its Balearic Islands, and a Ligurian Sea between Corsica and Liguria in Italy, the Tyrrhenian Sea, enclosed by Sardinia, the Italian peninsula, and Sicily. In the eastern Mediterranean, there is the Adriatic Sea between the Italian peninsula and the coasts of Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Montenegro and Albania. The Ionian Sea between Italy, Greece, and Albania, the Aegean Sea between Greece and Turkey, and the Sea of Marmara, between the Aegean and Black Seas. Many of these smaller seas are featured in local myth and folklore, and derive their names from these associations. Here are the Ligurian, Tyrrhenian, Adriatic, and Ionian Seas bordering Italy. The Adriatic Sea is between Italy and the Balkan countries of Croatia, Montenegro, and Albania. The Dalmatian coast is that part of Croatia on the Adriatic Sea. Venice is at the northern end of the Adriatic Sea. Here is the Ionian Sea between Italy and Greece, and the Aegean Sea between Greece and Turkey. This is the Aegean Sea, between Greece and Turkey. The Aegean Sea contains the numerous islands of the Grecian archipelago. The Western Mediterranean The Western Mediterranean is subdivided into three principal submarine basins. The Albron Basin is east of Gibraltar between the coasts of Spain and Morocco. The Algerian Basin is west of Sardinia and Corsica, extending from off the coast of Algeria to off the coast of France. These two basins together are called the Western Basin. The Tyrrhenian Basin, that part of the Mediterranean known as the Tyrrhenian Sea, lies between Italy and the islands of Sardinia and Corsica. The Eastern Mediterranean The Eastern Mediterranean is subdivided into two major basins. The Ionian Basin is in the area known as the Ionian Sea, to the south of Italy and Greece. 
a submarine ridge between the western end of Crete and Libya, separates the Ionian Basin from the Levantine Basin, to the south of Anatolia, or Turkey. The island of Crete separates the Levantine Basin from the Aegean Sea. Here is a satellite view of the eastern Mediterranean. The largest rivers that flow into the Mediterranean Sea are the Po, Rhone, Ebro, and Nile. The Nile River is the longest river in the world, with a length of 4,180 miles or 6,700 kilometers. The two great tributaries of the Nile are the White Nile, starting in equatorial East Africa, and the Blue Nile beginning in Ethiopia. The Rhone River has a total length of 497 miles, or 800 kilometers. It starts in the Swiss Alps in France. It is joined by its main tributary, the River Seine at Lyon, before going south and emptying into the Mediterranean, just to the west of Marseille. The Po River, in Latin, Patis flows 405 miles, or 652 kilometers eastward across northern Italy, from the Italian Alps to the Adriatic Sea near Venice. It is the longest river in Italy, and goes through many important Italian towns, including Turin, in Italian, Torino, and indirectly through Milan, or Milano. The Ivro River or in Catalan, Eber, is Spain's largest and longest river, with a length of 565 miles or 910 kilometers. It starts in the province of Cantabria, and runs almost parallel to the Pyrenees, before ending in a delta on the Mediterranean Sea, in the province of Tarragona south of Barcelona. The Geology of the Mediterranean Region The African and the Asian shores are very arid and flat, while the European shores, though not subject to a heavy rainfall, are more mountainous and greener, with a more temperate climate. Here are the major mountain ranges in the Mediterranean Basin. Earthquakes and volcanic disturbances are frequent in the Mediterranean region, especially in the eastern part. Here are the volcanoes of the Mediterranean and Western Asia. Of particular note are Vesuvius, just to the north of Naples in Italy, and Etna on the island of Sicily. Here is Vesuvius in the ancient Roman city of Pompeii that was buried by its eruption in the year 79 AD. The history of the Mediterranean region is the history of the interaction of the cultures and peoples of the lands surrounding the Mediterranean Sea, the central superhighway of transport, trade, and cultural exchange between diverse peoples. The ease of communications across the sea and the prevailing freedom from storms in the summer months, all made the Mediterranean the inland sea of early civilizations. Trade and communication flourished and declined with the fortunes of the Mediterranean civilizations. Its history is important to understanding the origin and development of the Mesopotamian, Egyptian, Phoenician, Jewish, Greek, Latin, Arab, Persian, and Turkish cultures, and hence is important to understanding the development of Western civilization. Some of the most ancient civilizations flourished around the Mediterranean. It was a highway for commerce by merchants trading from Phoenicia, Carthage, Greece, Sicily, and Rome, who were rivals for dominance of its shores and trade. The dawn of civilization, two of the first human civilizations began in the Mediterranean area. Civilization first developed in Mesopotamia, beginning with Sumer in the 4th millennium BC. 
Soon after, the Nile River Valley was unified under the pharaohs in the 4th millennium BC, and civilization quickly spread through the Fertile Crescent to the east coast of the sea, and throughout the Levant, which makes the present-day Mediterranean countries of Syria, Lebanon, and Israel part of the cradle of humanity. In time, large empires developed in Asia Minor, such as the Hittites. The main expansion was delayed until ships sturdy enough to cross the sea were developed. Cyprus and the other islands developed, and the Minoan civilization flourished on the island of Crete. While the river valley civilizations always had larger populations, the trading societies on the coast of the sea soon became the most prosperous and rose to power. The two most notable of the early civilizations were the Greek city-states and the Phoenicians. The Greeks expanded throughout the Aegean Sea and the western coast of the Anatolia, in present-day Turkey. The Phoenicians spread through the western Mediterranean, including North Africa and the Iberian Peninsula. From 1200 to 800 BC, the Phoenicians lived and prospered on the Mediterranean coast north of Palestine, gaining fame as sailors and traders. They occupied a string of cities along the Mediterranean coast, in what is today Lebanon and Syria, and their chief cities were Tyre and Sidon. This map shows the Phoenician sea routes and the principal cities where they traded. Many of these cities, like Carthage, were Phoenician colonies. The Phoenicians were the masters of trade in the Mediterranean, exporting jewelry, furniture, textiles, cedar wood, and purple dye. They also dealt in precious metals, which came from the mines of the Iberian Peninsula, the lands of present-day Spain and Portugal. To the north of Greece, in Macedonia, Greek technological and organizational skill was forged with a long history of cavalry warfare. Under Alexander the Great, this force turned east, and in a series of three decisive battles, routed the Persian forces and took their empire, which included Egypt and the Phoenician lands. The major centers of the Mediterranean at the time became part of Alexander's empire as a result. His empire quickly disintegrated, and the Middle East, Egypt, and Greece were soon again independent. Alexander's conquests spread Greek knowledge and ideas throughout the region. In North Africa the former Phoenician colony of Carthage rose to dominate its surroundings with an empire that contained many of the other Phoenician colonies. However, it was a city on the Italian peninsula, Rome, that would eventually dominate the entire Mediterranean basin. Spreading first through Italy, Rome defeated Carthage in the Punic Wars becoming the leading force in the region. The Romans soon spread east taking Greece, and the Greek heritage played an important role in the Roman Empire. The Romans, although not a maritime nation, copied the Phoenicians, soon conquering Sicily in 241 BC, and then Carthage itself in 146 BC. The Romans became the new dominators of the Mediterranean Sea, calling it Mare Nostrum, meaning our sea. For several centuries under the Roman Empire the Mediterranean became virtually a Roman lake, surrounded on all sides by the empire. The map shows that the empire extended from the British Isles in the northwest to Egypt in the southeast and from Armenia in the northeast, to Mauritania, now Morocco, in the southwest. The Roman Empire thus encompassed the Mediterranean, 
ruled every civilized land in Europe and Africa, and extended into Asia. The only other civilized countries in the world lay farther east, in Asia. The Emperor Trajan extended Roman rule into Mesopotamia, now Iraq. Egyptian power moved from the Nile cities to the coastal ones. Especially Alexandria in the ancient world there once stood a 500-foot Pharos lighthouse on an island in Egypt. Built in 290 BC, one could easily notice it when approaching the famous Alexandria Harbor. It was one of the wonders of the ancient world. One portion of the empire was Judea, and in time, a religion founded in that region, Christianity, would spread throughout the Roman Empire and eventually became its official faith. From 753 to 509 BC, the beginnings of Rome. From 509 to 27 BC, the Roman Republic, and from 27 BC to 312 AD, the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire began to crumble, however, and collapsed in the 5th century. Pondugar in France is a Roman aqueduct built circa 19 BC. It is one of France's top tourist attractions and a World Heritage Site. The western part of the empire, Gaul, and the Iberian Peninsula, were invaded by nomadic horse peoples from the Eurasian steppe. These conquerors soon became settled, and adopted many of the local customs, forming many small and warring kingdoms. The splendor of the Roman Empire lasted several centuries, until around 400 AD, when hordes of invaders descended from the north, the Goths, the Vandals, and the Huns, from Asia, wreaking terror and devastation. The empire was ended with the deposing of the last emperor in the year 476, when a new era started, the Middle Ages. Temporarily, the East was again dominant, in the form of Byzantine Empire formed from the eastern half of the Roman Empire, with the capital of Constantinople. Another power was rising in the East, that of Islam in rapid conquest. The Arab armies motivated by Islam, and led by the Caliphs, swept through much of the Middle East. The Muslim conquerors also swept through North Africa, and at the far west crossed the sea taking Iberia, before being halted in southern France by the Franks. The Byzantine Empire and the Arabs, then dominated the Mediterranean. Much of North Africa became a peripheral area to the main Muslim centers in the Middle East, but Iberia. Al-Andalus, and Morocco soon broke from this distant control, and founded one of the world's most advanced societies at the time, along with Baghdad in the eastern Mediterranean. This is the Alhambra in Granada, Spain. This is an exceptional example of Moorish architecture and was once the palace of a caliph. Europe was reviving. However, as more organized and centralized states began to form in the later Middle Ages, motivated by religion and dreams of conquest, the kings of Europe launched a number of crusades to try to roll back Muslim power and retake the Holy Land. The crusades were unsuccessful in this goal, but they were far more effective in weakening the already tottering Byzantine Empire that began to lose increasing amounts of territory to the Ottoman Turks. Europe continued to increase in power as the Renaissance began in the Mediterranean region, particularly northern Italy, especially Florence, Pisa, Siena, Milan, and Venice. The Islamic states had never been major naval powers, 
and trade from the east to Europe was soon in the hands of Italian traders, especially the Venetians, who profited immensely from it. Between the 11th and 14th centuries, Italian trading city-states such as Genoa, Venice, and Barcelona in Spain dominated the region. They struggled with the Ottomans for naval supremacy, particularly in the eastern Mediterranean. Products of Asia passed to Europe over Mediterranean trade routes until the establishment of a route around the Cape of Good Hope in the late 15th century. Pisa, Genoa, Ravenna and Venice, all important cities in the Mediterranean region, became the dominating maritime powers and accumulated much wealth, reflected in the beautifully decorated buildings and churches and in the art treasures stored there. During the Renaissance period, Italy produced about 70% of the world's current art treasures in just a very short time. However, the once unbeatable fleet of ships could no longer be maintained or replaced, as the local supply of large timber began to diminish in the depleted forests. Dominance of the seas passed to nations outside of the Mediterranean, such as Holland and finally to England. Here is the Byzantine, or Eastern Roman Empire at its height under the Emperor Justinian in 565. We see that it encompassed most of the Mediterranean world. Ottoman power continued to grow, and in 1453, the Byzantine, or Eastern Roman Empire was extinguished with the fall of Constantinople. The Ottomans already controlled Greece and much of the Balkans, and soon also began to spread through North Africa. North Africa had grown wealthy from the trade across the Sahara Desert. However, the Portuguese, who, along with other Christian powers, had been engaged in a long campaign to evict the Muslims from Iberia, had found a method to circumvent this trade by trading directly with West Africa. This trade with West Africa by the Portuguese was enabled by a new type of ship, the Caravel, that made trade in the rough Atlantic waters profitable for the first time. Sultan Suleiman the first. The magnificent, and the lawgiver reigned for 46 years from 1520 to 1566, as the tenth and greatest ruler of the Ottoman Empire. The growing naval prowess of the European powers confronted further rapid Ottoman expansion in the region when the Battle of Lepanto in 1571, off of western Greece, checked the power of the Ottoman navy. This only slowed the Ottoman expansion instead of ending it. The prized island of Cyprus became Ottoman in 1571. The last resistance in Tunisia ended in 1574, and a 22-year-long siege in Crete pushed the Venetians out of this strategic island in 1669. A balance of power was then established between Spain and Ottoman Empire until 18th century, each dominating their respective half of the Mediterranean. The development of oceanic shipping began to affect the entire Mediterranean, however. While once all trade from the east had passed through the region, the circumnavigation of Africa allowed gold spices, and dyes to be imported directly to the Atlantic ports of Western Europe. This was the route taken by ships in Columbus Day, around the southern tip of Africa, and eastward to the Spice Islands of Asia. The Americas were also a source of extreme wealth to the Western powers, from which some of the Mediterranean states were largely cut off. The base of European power thus shifted northward and westward, 
and the once wealthy Italy became a peripheral area dominated by foreigners. Another factor in the decline of the Mediterranean in importance was the Industrial Revolution, starting in the mid-1700s. The two fundamental resources of which were coal and iron. Here is a map of coal and iron resources of Europe, in the present, but is nevertheless representative of the past. We see that coal is found in Northern Europe, mostly in Britain, France, Belgium, and Germany. Iron ore is also mostly in Northern Europe, with very little in the Mediterranean region. The industrialization of Northern and Western Europe, better agricultural technology, and increased productivity, and the shifting of the important trade routes from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic, all led to a decline in importance of the Mediterranean region. By the 19th century the Northern European states were vastly more powerful and began to colonize North Africa. France spread its power south by taking Algeria in 1830. Britain gained control of Egypt in 1882. The Mediterranean region was dominant from antiquity to about the 16th century. From the 17th century onward, Northern Europe became dominant. When visiting the Mediterranean region, many of the points of interest are of this earlier time, whereas the north coast of Europe reflects a more recent era. The Renaissance is a period in European history from about the 14th to the 17th centuries in the Mediterranean world. One is immersed mainly in the period from antiquity to the end of the Renaissance period. The world of Northern Europe is one mainly of the modern era from the 17th century to the present time. The era of the Mediterranean world, in 476. The end of the Western Roman Empire, in 1453. The fall of Constantinople and end of the Eastern Roman Empire. And in the 14th to 17th centuries, the Renaissance centered in Northern Italy. Dominance now shifting to Northern Europe 1497 Vasco da Gama opened a new route to Asia around the Cape of Good Hope 1492 Columbus sailed across the Atlantic Ocean 1517 Protestant Reformation 1588 Defeat of the Spanish Armada by the English 1776 First efficient steam engine developed 1776 American Revolution 1789 French Revolution with the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869, the Mediterranean resumed its importance as a link on the route to the east. The opening of the Suez Canal, together with the advent of the steamship, continued industrialization in northwestern and central Europe, and French colonization in North Africa made the Mediterranean again one of the busiest sea lanes of the world. Much of the traffic, however, passed through the sea en route between Asia and ports in northwestern Europe. Countries in the Mediterranean basin had not been able to industrialize and had retained their agricultural and artisan economies. This limited their purchasing power and reduced their ability to trade. The Ottoman Empire finally collapsed after the First World War, and its holdings were carved up among France and Britain. But the Turkish regions quickly regained their independence, becoming the independent state of Turkey in 1923. The importance of the Mediterranean as a trade link resulted in European rivalry for control of its coasts and islands and led to campaigns in the region during both world wars. Since World War II, the Mediterranean region has been of strategic importance to both the United States and, until its dissolution, the Soviet Union. The history of the Mediterranean is still being written today, as we have seen the new changes in the Balkans, in the Middle East the elimination of barriers between the European countries and the dramatic migrations from the poorer countries to the wealthier ones.
There is also a growing consciousness amongst all the bordering countries of the Mediterranean of their responsibility towards the sea, and concrete steps are now being taken to protect it, to keep it clean, healthy and safe, for all those fortunate enough to be able to navigate and explore its many wonders. Tourism has become a major source of income for Mediterranean coastal states, where more than half of world income from tourism is generated annually. Tens of millions of people descend each summer to enjoy the Mediterranean's beaches and culture-rich shores. The Mediterranean Climate The general climate is mild and temperate. It is in fact called Mediterranean, and it is influenced by the hot and dry air coming from the Sahara in summer, making for idyllic holidays, and from the damper and colder air from the Atlantic Ocean in winter. This type of climate was in fact very suitable for the development of early civilization. This climate supports characteristic Mediterranean forests, woodlands, and shrub vegetation. Crops of the region include olives, grapes, oranges, tangerines, and cork. The region around the sea has a warm, dry climate characterized by abundant sunshine. Strong local winds, such as the hot, dry Sirocco from the south and the cold, dry Mistral and Bora from the north blow across the sea. Along the North African coast from Tunisia and Egypt, more than 10 inches, 250 millimeters, of rainfall per year is rare. Whereas on the Dalmatian coast of Croatia there are places that receive 100 inches. Maximum precipitation is found in mountainous coastal areas. We will next have a short video clip of the Mediterranean climate. The Mediterranean Basin is a storied region, home to miles of sun-warmed beaches, fabulous wines, and bustling cities. It's been a cultural crossroads since the dawn of civilization. What first attracted people to the basin, then convinced them to stay, was surely the mild weather. White clouds float in a blue sky. Here, the four seasons are compressed into two. Hot summers bring clear, dry skies. Cool, but not frigid winters, deliver life-giving rain. Rain falls from a gray sky onto green fields. This Mediterranean climate offers a long growing season and comfortable living temperatures. The results? Rich crop harvests and tremendous natural bounty tree seedlings grow by other plants in straight rows. The temperate conditions of the Mediterranean can also be found in a handful of other places. A map shifts from Southern Europe to North America. Much of California and Northern Baja California. It moves down to South America. The central coast of Chile. It moves to Australia. Southwest and parts of South Australia. It shows South Africa to the West. And the Cape region of South Africa. Wind blows long grasses on a hilltop. Thanks to their similar climates, these regions have much in common. Understanding what features they share, what problems they face, and what is unique about each is helping people preserve these landscapes for the future. When to go? It depends on climate, cost, crowds, and availability. An important factor in deciding when to go is the climate of the Mediterranean region. Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Barcelona. Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Rome. Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Athens. Here is the rainfall throughout the year in Barcelona. The yearly total is 23.2 inches or 590 millimeters. 
We see that the season with the most rain is in the months of September through November. Here is the average number of days per month with precipitation throughout the year in Barcelona. Here is the rainfall throughout the year in Rome. The yearly total is 32 inches. We see that the season with the most rain is in the months of September through May. Here is the average number of days per month with precipitation throughout the year in Rome. Here is the average rainfall in inches throughout the year in Athens. We see that the season with the most rain is in the months of October through March. Here is the average number of days per month with precipitation throughout the year in Athens. Availability and cost VacationsToGo.com is a good source for information about ocean cruises. You can go to advanced search and specialize your search in many ways. This is an example of the way in which you can specialize your search. How crowded and how much? This is data extracted from VacationsToGo.com for Western Mediterranean cruises from Barcelona round trip via Athens. How crowded and how much? This is data extracted from VacationsToGo.com for Eastern Mediterranean cruises from Venice round trip via Athens. Another highly recommended website is CruiseCritic.com. It has information about cruises. As well as reviews and discussions with cruise ship passengers. Avoid the crowds. Is Dubrovnik being loved to death? In Dubrovnik only 1,157 people live in the old town. But there can be more than 8,000 cruise ship passengers visiting Dubrovnik in any one day. Ephesus has almost 2 million visitors per year. It is estimated that approximately 20 million tourists visit Venice annually. Only 55,000 live in the historic city area. How to go? The two basic choices are by land and by water. By land you can choose independent travel or group tours. Independent travel can be going to just one major destination like Paris, or London, or Amsterdam. To visit an entire country or region requires the means of transportation. This can be by train, rental car, or camping. If you're young, youth hostels may be of choice. For somewhat older people, a rental car, train, or a motor home in the UK, called a motor caravan, may be a choice. The countries in Europe are small compared to the US. Distances are short, and the train system is generally very good. For some, train travel, especially with a Eurail Pass, may be a good option. The roads in Western Europe are generally very good, so road travel by rental car is a possible choice. There are lots of campgrounds also, so a rental or lease of an RV, such as a motor home is another possibility, especially for a longer trip. For many people the best choice may be a group tour by motor coach. These typically are in the range of 7 to 21 days, and often cover several countries. The advantage is having everything planned and taken care of for you. 
The disadvantages are lack of independence and choice, and the necessity of packing and unpacking in a new lodging almost every day. Most places of interest in Europe are within easy reach of water. By the Mediterranean, North, and Baltic Seas, or by the many navigable rivers. Therefore ocean or river cruises can be an attractive option. A big advantage here is that your lodging travels with you. You don't have to pack and unpack every day. Most places of interest in the Mediterranean area are on, or within about an hour drive of the coast. So travel by cruise ship is a very good option. Because of the mountainous terrain close to the Mediterranean, the rivers are generally very short and not navigable by cruise boats. About the only river cruise in the Mediterranean region, other than the Nile, is on the Rhone River in southern France between Lyon and Avignon. This is an example of an eight-day cruise on the Rhone River between Lyon and Avignon. This is another example of an eight-day cruise on the Rhone in France between Lyon and Arles in Provence. In contrast, Europe north of the Alps has the vast expanse of the Great North European Plain, stretching from the Atlantic coast to the Ural Mountains in Russia. There are a number of navigable rivers of considerable length for river cruises, such as the Rhine, Danube, Seine, Moselle, Elba, and River, Lake, and Canal cruises in Russia between St. Petersburg and Moscow. There are also many cruises in the Baltic and North Sea areas. River cruises have become increasingly popular. Let's look at the relative pros and cons of river cruises versus ocean cruises. First of all, the ships used for river cruises are very limited by the size of rivers, canals, bridges, and locks. They generally accommodate 100 to 200 passengers, with about 120 to 150 being most typical. In contrast, ocean cruise ships are now up to in excess of 4,000 passengers, although cruise ships in the Baltic and North Seas are typically around 2,000. However, that's still 10 to 20 times that of river cruises. The smaller ship size means a higher cost for river cruises, perhaps by a factor of 1.5 to 2. Also, the entertainment will be on a much smaller scale, perhaps individual performers, rather than large ensembles or production numbers. However, sometimes local groups can come aboard on river cruises. The smaller ship size for river cruises means less distance from the cabin to the dining room, or other places on the ship. as well as less crowds, and less time exiting and entering the ship in various ports. The biggest ocean cruise ships have a passenger capacity of up to 6,600 with a crew of 1,500, for a total of 8,100 souls. The overall length is up to almost 1,000 feet, with a waterline width of 150 feet.
In contrast, river cruise ships have between 100 and 200 passengers. Although the American Queen on the Mississippi River can accommodate 436, and there are often around 400 on the Volga and other Russian rivers. Although there is no ultimate limitation on the size of ocean going cruise ships, most river cruise ships are designed in such a way not to waste any space and just fit into the locks. This is a lock on the Danube River. For example, the lock width along the Mine Danube Canal is 12 meters or 40 feet. So all ships can have a maximum width of 11.4 meters. The length of the locks is 190 meters or 625 feet. The length of river ships is generally limited to 443 feet, 135 meters, and the width to 38 feet, 11.5 meters, due to the constraints of the lock dimensions. There is almost no motion of the ship on river cruises as compared to ocean cruises, where rough weather and seas may be encountered. Most of the time on ocean cruises you are out of sight of land, and only the ocean to look at. On the rivers, you are always in sight of land, and have a view of riverside towns, cities, and countryside that is always changing. The ports of call on river cruises are often short overnight travels, so most days are spent in ports, typically for 8 to 10 hours, or more. On ocean cruises, there are often days at sea with no port, and port days are sometimes limited to just a few hours. On a river cruise you are often docked along the riverfront right in the city center. In contrast, on an ocean cruise you are often docked a long distance from the city center in some cases this might involve a long train ride of two or three hours each way. Let's look at a summary of the relative pros and cons of river cruises versus ocean cruises. Let's look at a summary of the relative pros and cons of river cruises versus ocean cruises. The most popular and convenient way to visit the Mediterranean region is by cruise ship. Here's an example of a 14-day Mediterranean cruise from Barcelona to Athens on Princess Cruises. Here's an example of a 12-day Mediterranean cruise from Barcelona to Venice on Viking Cruises. Most Mediterranean cruises are either in the Western Mediterranean or Eastern Mediterranean. Here's an example of a 12-day Western Mediterranean cruise. Round trip from Barcelona on Celebrity. Here's an example of a 10-day Western Mediterranean cruise. From Barcelona to Rome, Civita Vecchia, on Oceania cruises. Here's an example of an Eastern Mediterranean cruise. 11 days, round trip from Venice on Costa cruises. Here's an example of an Eastern Mediterranean cruise. 12 days, from Rome to Venice on Holland America. This statistic shows the global cruise industry deployment market share in 2016. By region, the Caribbean held the largest share of worldwide deployments at 34%, followed by the Mediterranean with 19%. Although the Baltic region is an interesting and exciting area for cruises, it does lag far behind the much more popular Mediterranean area. Both European regions combined are still substantially behind the Caribbean, which has a full one-third of the world's cruise ship deployment. More than half of world income from tourism is generated in the Mediterranean region, much of it from cruises. However, 
There are other very popular regions for cruises. Another favorite region for cruises is the Baltic, although it doesn't draw nearly as many as the Mediterranean. Many Baltic cruises start from Copenhagen and include Berlin, from Varnemünde, Tallinn, Helsinki, Stockholm, and two days in St. Petersburg. The Caribbean offers many cruise opportunities, especially from nearby ports such as Port Canaveral, Port Everglades, and the ports of Miami and Tampa. How to get there? There are two basic choices in getting over there, that is by air or by sea. By sea would require a transatlantic cruise from a nearby port, Port Canaveral, Port Everglades, Fort Lauderdale, or the Port of Miami. Transatlantic cruises from Florida ports, Fort Lauderdale and Miami, to Europe are repositioning cruises, in which ships are transferred from many cruises in the Caribbean to mostly Mediterranean ports. These transatlantic cruises from Florida ports to Europe are from late February through April or early May. Most of these are in April. The transatlantic cruises from Florida ports to the Mediterranean depart from Fort Lauderdale or Miami. Many of them end in Barcelona. This is an example of transatlantic cruises from Fort Lauderdale to Barcelona in Spain. These are all in March and April of 2020. There are seven cruises, with durations ranging from 12 to 24 days. There are also a few transatlantic cruises from Florida ports to Rome, Civita Vecchia. These are all in March and April of 2020. There are five cruises, with durations ranging from 14 to 26 days. Returning from Europe the situation is similar, except that now ships are leaving Europe starting in mid-October and going through November. The six-month gap between outbound and inbound repositioning cruises across the Atlantic can pose a major problem for those wanting to go by sea both ways. This is an example of transatlantic cruises from Barcelona to Florida ports. These are all in November of 2020. There are 12 cruises, with durations ranging of 14 or 15 days. Regularly Scheduled Transatlantic Voyages This is an example of some of the regularly scheduled transatlantic voyages from New York to Southampton. This is an example of the itinerary of the regularly scheduled transatlantic voyages from New York to Southampton. These voyages are on the Cunard Line ship Queen Mary II, with 3,064 passenger capacity and 1,253 crew. This is an example of the itinerary of the regularly scheduled transatlantic voyages from Southampton to New York. This is an example of the itinerary of voyages from Southampton to New York. By air. For Mediterranean cruises, Barcelona, BCN, is a popular departure port, with Rome, FCO, being another good choice. To get there by air, the local airports are Orlando. MCO, Sanford, SFB, Tampa, TPA, Gainesville, GNV, 
and Jacksonville, JAX. For transatlantic travel the best option would probably be Orlando, MCO, as having, by far, the most flights. Unfortunately, there are no non-stop flights from Orlando, MCO, to any of the Mediterranean ports, including Barcelona, BCN, or Rome, FCO. So there must be a transfer at some other airport in Europe. From the villages to the airport, MCO, you can drive and park your car. Or take a shared ride shuttle. A European cruise will generally involve at least one week. Or probably much more. So the parking fees can be substantial. Parking at the Orlando Airport Terminal Garage is $19 a day, whereas long-term off-site parking with a shuttle service can be as low as $6 a day. A shared ride shuttle may be a good option. From the villages there are two basic options. Workman transportation, formerly the village's transportation, or the village airport van. The village's transportation has recently been acquired by Workman Transportation. This shuttle services has two pickup and transfer locations. Lake Sumter Landing in Brownwood. For an extra charge, taxi service is available for pickup and drop off at your home. To and from these two transfer locations. The advantage of going directly to the transfer location is that there is less time involved in dropping off or picking up other passengers through the villages. Village Airport Van is a point-to-point -point service from home to airport with no transfers. However, it is a shared ride service, so there may be substantial time involved in picking up or dropping off of other passengers throughout the villages and surrounding areas. Groom Transportation has up to 20 daily round-trip shuttles between the villages and Orlando International Airport for just $19 each way with complimentary home pickup and drop-off. However you go, bon voyage. I'm always available to answer your questions at drsydney22 at gmail.com. Table of Contents, A Journey Around the Mediterranean.